I might be at the game in a suit. We'll see. <laughs> All right. We are back live here on Radio Road. Darren Smith, Michael Coleman, and Miss Kelsey Nicole Nelson. We are joined by the great, the yeah. GOAT of NBA analysts and reporters <laughs> right now, the one and only Mr. Chris Bussard, FS1 NBA analyst and Fox Sports Radio's co-host of The Odd Couple with Mr. Rob Parker. We'll have on a little bit later today. Thank you so very much yeah. for joining us today. You're uh, welcome. You were, my you were, pleasure. You were a guest on my show last year via phone last year after the uh, NBA Finals. So uh, thank you again for joining us today. And Oh, and I will be remiss. Gene Johnson uh, uh, said that your mom and her, I think they're in the same sorority. Uh, Alpha AKA. K. Yeah, they're so my sorority. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And so, and so she told me to tell you hello and that people are proud of you back home. So. Okay, great. So, uh, That's great I, to had hear. To, I had that. to make sure I, I, I relate that message. You always got a place to go, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so what is, uh, you know, I know because you focus on basketball, but with your sports show, what brings you to uh, Atlanta GA? Well, our show is, you know, the show The Odd Couple with Rob Parker is all sports. Yeah. So Fox always sends their radio shows to here to do them at the Super Bowl. So we're doing it live all week right. from the Super Bowl. This is my first time being at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. Because usually, you know, as a reporter, I was covering the NBA for 25 years or so. So now, since I'm at Fox, I've branched out beyond the NBA. I'm talking football, all the sports, baseball, whatever, on our radio show. When I'm on television, they mainly have me speak uh, basketball. But uh, I'm branching out more now that I'm at Fox. And, and I will say that, you know, they don't take a lot of time off. But when they do you, Rob, you know, when you all fill in on Undisputed, those are literally some of the best two and a half hours uh, oh, yeah. of, of, of sports talk. Because we're actually doing, we're co-hosting February 11th to the 16th, I think, or the 15th that yeah. week. Okay. So That's the Skip week. and Shannon will take off. And then we'll, Rob and I will be co-hosting. We'll so. be watching. Yeah, right, it's going to be fun. And then the following week, I'm co-hosting First Things First. Not ah. with Rob, but I'll be there. Yeah, with, with Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah me Nick and Nick Reich. go back, go Nick back with him in Kansas City. Okay. Me, okay. me and uh, uh, his his wife, I used to date used to date her sister. Oh, oh okay. So, yeah, so, so we, you know, back, back when we were <laughs> young. Yeah, so, right. so, so, yeah, so that, that's how we're all, we're all oh, yeah. uh, tight knit. Okay. Um, so, what are you looking for in Sunday's game? Yeah. And, you know, give us your thoughts on, on how on how it's going to play I think out. the Patriots are going to win. Oh, I'm not betting against Tom Brady. You're in Los <laughs> Angeles <laughs> now. Come on, I, I, well, I, I, look, I don't bring feelings to a fact fight. So hey. I, I think that I <laughs> think Tom thing. Brady is the, the best quarterback of all time. I think Bill Belichick's the best coach of all time. And I think that. they will find a way to take away what the – Rams do best. Mm. I think that the Rams' pass rush won't, they won't be able to get to him because he gets rid of the ball so quickly. Mm. And so uh, I think it'll be a good game, and I wouldn't be shocked if the Rams win. They're, yeah. very, they're a great team. But I think with the experience uh, I, from the coaches to the players, I think New England's going to get them. And in New England, look, this doesn't always mean anything, but having lost last year, mm -hmm. I think they're right. extra motivated yeah. to come back like and that and win again. So I like seeing greatness. And yeah. for no quarterback other than Brady's won more than four Super Bowls. So if he gets six, I mean, it's just yeah. you're in the midst of history being made. So, But, uh, you know, I have to exciting. remind people, though, he is not the first to have five Super Bowl rings. That's Charles Haley. Yep. People, 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 right, right. people right. like to forget, right. you know, they try to overlook right. that. Well, he qualifies. Right. He's a quarterback. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, Brady and the Patriots are very uh, polarizing, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Especially Brady, he hasn't done anything but just win. I remember when Tiger, well, yeah. you know, when he kind of became the guy at all time, and, and folks were like, ah, oh, I'm tired of Tiger. Tiger winning, right, somebody right, needs to push him. Right, right. <laughs> Why do you think he is so polarizing? I think uh, some people, like my partner Rob Parker, <laughs> focus on the cheating, you know, with the flake mm -hmm. gate mm -hmm. and the ball and spy gate and all that. Um, and I think. I don't know. I don't know because you know some people might say the fact that the owner Robert Kraft is mm -hmm. tight with Donald Trump, but it was before mm -hmm. Trump was president. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I, I don't really know. Uh, maybe it's you know the reputation that Boston as a city has. I yeah. know when I was a kid, you know, with the Lakers and the Celtics, that was very racially divided right. situation mm -hmm. where pretty much all the black people pulled for the Lakers and the mm -hmm. white people pulled for <laughs> the yeah. Celtics. Sure. Um, I don't think. You know, Boston obviously has a history of racism, but we in America, every right, city got right, a history right. of racism. Very true. So I don't, 
I don't hold that, obviously, against the Patriots. I'm not like a huge Patriots fan, but I do like Tom Brady, mm-hmm. and I like their team uh, to some degree. But mainly I like seeing greatness. They're not, not like my favorite team, but I guess that's why. You yeah. know, I yeah. think, like I said, the cheating. And, and, and sometimes when you win, I was just talking to somebody – that says they, they're tired of seeing the Golden State Warriors win it. Right. So sometimes people just want some fresh blood right. in there and a team that, you know, a new team to win it. The yeah. only time they never said that was when it was Michael Jordan and the Bulls. That's people true. Just, we <laughs> loved it. We loved it. Jordan's the one, it. and I think because Jordan was just so beloved yeah. pretty much everywhere, everywhere yeah. that he was one of the few athletes that was able to transcend that, you mm. know, but you're right. That being said, let's say the L.A. Rams are somehow able to pull out this win, right? They, they got a and chance. Could, it's not right? like they a could. blowout. Right? I mean, like I said, I wouldn't be shocked if they win. Yeah. If you look at it on paper, yeah. you would say they have the better team. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Offense, defense, yeah. more talent. Right. But, uh, you know, Patriots are a sharp team. But, uh, yeah, but that being said, I mean, what do you think the win would mean for L.A.? Of course, we know some of the St. Louis fans are still mad. Then at the airport, I don't know if you saw, but the Saints fans, some of them are protesting the right, game. Right, right, I mean, how do you think L.A. will celebrate? And do you think they've really well, rallied around all, this Rams team? Well, first of all, the Saints fans need to let it go. And <laughs> okay. I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. I, all, my, all my family, all my American roots are in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Uh, Broussard is like Smith down there, you know. (laughs) So my parents went to Xavier (laughs) University in New Orleans and all that. So I was born in Baton Rouge, but you got to let it go. It's, it's, look, you, yes, it was a horrible call. It should have been called. But on the series right before that, the Saints face masked Mm -hmm. on Jared Goff at the one or two yard line. So it would have been first and goal from the two. For the Rams. So they probably would have scored a touchdown rather than a field goal, and they would have been up 24-20 anyway. And that changes the entire way New Orleans is even approaching that uh, possession. So, and this has happened before. You know, the Hugh Hollins call with the Mm. Knicks. And Jeffrey Mayer, the kid that interfered with the Yankees and the Orioles in the, the, you know, 1996 playoffs. And what's the Cubs situation? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you know, so this is, that may have been the worst, but it's happened before. Just let it go. Let it go. Uh, But for the Rams, it's interesting. I mean, it would be huge. Obviously, they've been back and forth in in and out Mm -hmm. of L.A. But I got to be honest, the L.A., I don't think they fully captured the imagination of Los Angeles. Being out there, it's it's a Dodgers and Lakers town. Right. And it's, it doesn't appear to be a pro football town. You know, the Chargers certainly haven't captured anybody's <laughs> imagination. And the Rams, you know, people like them because they're good and they're in the Super Bowl, but I I just don't – it's not like other cities. Right. It's not like, you know, it would be in, in Boston if New England wins or in New Orleans if the Saints right. wins, win. Um, so, you know, it'll, it'll, it maybe it'll kind of start – to get the city really excited about right. football. Obviously, they'd be happy, but it'll start maybe a Rams era there where they capture the imagination of the city. Right. They're going to have the new uh, stadium mm-hmm. in Inglewood. So uh, we'll see, but, yeah, it's yeah. it's now, it's now a you, Lakers and a Dodgers town. Now, speaking yeah. of the Lakers, I know, <laughs> I know I know everybody, you know, talks about LeBron and LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> so do you – do you cover like the Lakers for FS1 or like who? So I'm not a re- I'm really not a reporter for the most part anymore. I mean, I still talk to people around the league and get information and you know, so I can give educated opinions when I talk. Uh, and I'm an analyst too. But it's not like ESPN. When I was at ESPN, I was a reporter, and that's why I left because they wanted me to lock me in just <laughs> to be a reporter, <laughs> right? And I was just tired. I've done it for. I'm 50 years old. I've been doing. I was doing that 25 years old years. So, you wow. know, I was ready to move on and be more of a voice where right. I can say my opinion, analyze things, and all that. So, that's really that's why I made the move to FS1. So now I'm more of a personality commentator analyst. And, and, and when FS1. you signed, with, was was doing radio part of the negotiation when you came we, over? There? It was doing like a weekend show. So I would do a show on Saturday or Sunday, but I wasn't doing a daily right. show Monday through Friday. And I am a subscriber of your podcast came. as oh, well. Oh, thank you, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So that that just they liked Rob and I, Rob Parker and myself on the radio. And they decide to make it a daily show. So, and we're excited. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. Rob and I, you know, we really go at each other, disagree, <laughs> joke about each other. Uh, but we, we've known each other for more than two decades. We've been friends. We respect each other right. and what we've both accomplished in the business. 
So it's all fun, and it's just great chemistry. Now, I do want to ask you, of course, uh, you're doing something this Saturday. Yeah. I know myself and Mike are going to be there, but please talk about that because outside of sports and people who talk about you say that this man is a, is a good man. And, yeah. and of course, we have, a, we have a, a common denominator. My cousin is the chaplain, Kevin, Kevin yeah, Nickerson, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Rams. And, you know, you all are, are uh, you know, you walk, that, you walk by that faith of right. yours. Uh, talk about what you got going on at Morehouse College. Well, yeah, we're doing uh, an event tomorrow morning. Well, it's from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah. Uh, it's called The Huddle. And I, I teamed up with Troy Vincent, who's the executive yeah. vice president of NFL, and we put this event together. So we'll have several former NFL players there, yes. Greg Jennings, mm-hmm. Takeo Spikes, Sean Alexander, the former MVP. Yeah. Uh, Chris Draft, uh, Aeneas Williams. There's going to be probably about 30 NFL-type wow. players there. And we're going to do a panel discussion where they're going to share their faith in Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and what it's done for their lives in terms of helping them overcome hardships, yeah. you know, um, challenges and things like that. And, and just the challenges of being a man of God in this society that doesn't always see the value in that, you know. And then we're going to have a workshop. So it's going to be inspirational, but also educational and enlightening. We're going to have workshops on sex, on uh, race, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, on money, like how you should, as a man, Mm -hmm. how you have, you know, should spend your money and be responsible with it and your obligate, you know, obligations to your family with your finances and things like that. Then we'll have some rappers, you know, that do inspirational rap and all that stuff. So it's going to be at Morehouse College. It's sponsored by an organization I founded yeah. and I'm president of called the King Movement. And um, and then working with Troy Vincent. So it's going to really be great. And, uh, you know, as African-Americans, we are a very spiritual people. Mm-hmm. That's been our strength, whether it's in the church, in the mosque, in the temple. And I always tell young people, I'm like, look, when you get into mainstream society, don't let them take your faith, you know. And I think, to be honest, as a whole, collectively, we are losing our faith as we get more and more secularized like the rest of mainstream America. And I think it is making us weaker as a people. And so um, I tell people, you know, keep your foundation, your moral, your spiritual foundation when you get in this this rat race, this dog eat dog yeah, mainstream America, and yeah. uh, and and you know so that's what it's gonna be about. But it's gonna we're gonna have about 120 college students there, it's wonderful. and uh, it's all male. No offense, it's okay. I'll let it <laughs> but we're really trying <laughs> yeah. to reach. You know, we believe when you have strong men, mm-hmm. you have a strong family, right. you have a strong people. Right. So uh, we're really trying to help the brothers, and uh, so. We hope it goes well. We Chris, believe it will. At the end of the day, what do you want your legacy to be? At the end of the day, when people say Chris, when they say your name, you know, what, what do you want it to be? What do you want to be remembered for? Not just in the broadcast world, but right. as a man, because what you're doing, obviously, I, it speaks volumes. Right. But I would, I would like my legacy to be uh, that I was a man of God, a real man of God, and that showed in my love for people, and particularly in my love for African American people. That's my people, and really, I, w- I want to make a difference in our communities. Mm-hmm. And like I said, mainly through strengthening our men, our young boys, our men. You know, um, so many brothers, young men and women, are growing up without that father yes. in the home and that father figure. Right. And um, it's tough. That's I can't imagine. My father was there. I can't imagine right. what that's like. But I think that we have to provide examples for them uh, of being what a man is being like. And there is still something as being a man. You know, and I think society is trying to, conf- you know, it's just confusing, right. you know, uh, because of some of the definitions society will put out. Um, and so I really want to be known as somebody that helped strengthen the African-American community, um, the, the black family. And uh, and then throughout through that. America as a whole. But I really hope we can get you to Kansas City for that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm definitely down. I don't know if I've ever been to Kansas City. Uh-huh. Well, okay. you do. When you do, you know I got to take you get some, <laughs> get some good barbecue. I'm down with that. Okay. One of my good friends is from Kansas City. He lives in Jersey now and has – actually, you know what? He might be – 
don't know if he's Kansas City or St. Louis, but he does ribs. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ribs is St. Louis, right? Yeah, no, they, they, no, they take no, the They more known for y'all than y'all. Yeah. No, no, no. They just know for the St. Louis out where they cut where they cut the top of the ribs <laughs> off. <laughs> and sure. the sewer, yeah. No, no, no. So no, no, because we got no. He barbecue, like, barbecue, he's like, you ain't getting away barbecue, with that. Barbecue started in Kansas City. <laughs> it, right, it started right. in Kansas City now. We got right. so he, we'll go right about it. No, you were talking about the lack of, of, a, of a quality man in the household of kids. How do you combat the entertainment world? Right, I, mean, I know the rappers, are, they, yeah, they got every true. right to make their money and do their right. thing and make their living. Mm. And sometimes what they do is risque. And, you know, you can't shield the kids from that noise. Right. So how do, you, how do you balance? How do you hope to balance that? It's tough, man, because uh, you're right, the entertainment. And we make it sound so good. Right. Yeah. We yeah. dance oh, yeah, into we our own death. Right. You know, we make it sound yeah. so good. I remember hearing when, when Trayvon Martin, you know, I'm sorry, it, it was Michael uh, Michael uh, Brown. 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 Yeah. Uh, and, and a group of rappers did a song called uh, Hands Up, Don't Shoot, mm-hmm. I Believe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was a great song. And it, I supported it. It was powerful. But then I was thinking, like, a lot of the brothers that were rapping in it got music about killing other brothers. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's not, right. people are not going to take that seriously. Right. You know, because... Right. And I know I'm not saying it's all it's the same no, thing when a no. cop shoots somebody as a regular citizen does right. cuz the average citizen isn't paid to protect and serve. Exactly. Right. But still, you know, a lot of people think it's a conspiracy. I know how much hip hop influenced me. Mm-hmm. You know, I love hip hop it's my favorite form of music. I'm of that generation. But when I was in college, it was Public Enemy, KRS-One, yeah. you know, yeah. Eric B and Rock like positive, you know, right. stuff, black history right. stuff that right. was teaching you to some degree. Um, and then so, they got angry. Right, right. So the, the, <laughs> if it's having that much of an influence on kids like it did on me, but the message is more about genocide, which is, you know, it's killing blacks, killing the other blacks and all that, then imagine what that's doing to our youth. I'm actually, it's interesting because as much as I love hip-hop, and uh, like you said, we still support these brothers' right to do what they want to do. I've been interested. It's been interesting that the Me Too has not come at hip hop yet, and I'm wondering if it wow. will because Very good point. the lyrics yeah. are Very really good point. Right, what, what they they're saying about, about mm-hmm. women, and true. not that they're doing it necessarily, right. Right. but they're putting it out there. Yeah, well, and uh, it's just made me wonder yeah. about that. But I, I have two daughters. They're uh, juniors in college, and I raised, you know, I had to raise them. And what I would do is, uh, you know, initially I just shielded them from that the music because they were basically listening to what I listened to <laughs> right. in the car, which is like, you know, it might be R&B, it might be gospel, R&B, gospel rap, sure. or just whatever. But they, you know, they were into that. But as they got older in their teenage years, they obviously wanted to listen to what their friends sure. were. And, all. and so I let them, yeah. but I would talk to them about good. the stuff, the lyrics, and yeah. Like, what are they saying and stuff? And, you know, we had some knockdown drag outs. I wouldn't let them go to certain concerts, you know? <laughs> you definitely let like, go to R. Look, Kelly I ain't letting you go to, yeah. right, I ain't letting you yeah. go to this concert. He calling you this and that, right. and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, so it uh, it's a challenge. I just sure. think you have to keep the lines of communication open. Well, you can't we, totally shield them from it. Right. right. And so you have to keep the lines of communication open. Um but I think, like I said, it, society is really confused now mm-hmm. because they're they're censoring certain things, but then they aren't censoring other things. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, um, you know, it's just. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, you know, you, you talked about the whole V2 movement. You know, I know they're they're so focused on R. Kelly. Our I want to know, and Russell and Simmons, you know, yeah. I understand. But I want to know, are they going to go after these 5,000 preachers that we saw this right. morning on right. Good Morning America? Yeah. 5,000 preachers? I mean, Catholic preachers, Catholic preachers. Uh, out of, out of Child Texas. Child sexual abuse. 5,000 in Texas, Texas alone? They, Texas wrote a, they, alone. Wrote a li- they wrote a line of names. Wow. Like this That's morning crazy. on Good, yeah. on yes. good wow. Morning wow. America. You know, I, uh, I grew up Catholic, and I'm thankful <laughs> that I never experienced anything good like that. You. And I, I, some of the priests I knew, you know, as a kid, you joke, oh, this and that about the priest. But you never really thought they right. were doing stuff. Yeah. And I don't, none of the ones that I recall ever did, you know, right. I never heard anything about them doing sure. stuff. But I did meet priests that if, if it came out that he was doing something, 
I wouldn't be surprised because, mm-hmm. you know, like, I would be like, oh, you know, okay, you can kind of see. But, um, yeah, they definitely need, you know, it, it needs, you want, justice is, you know, the same standard for all people. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and that's what we as African Americans want. We want right. fair treatment, you know, not just focusing on our us and our Shortcomings. Talking about justice. Where's the, where's the Kaepernick situation at now? I yeah. mean, it's kind of in limbo right now. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest. I don't think he's ever gonna play again. Right. Um, and I think he's gonna get paid though. Well, he's getting paid case, from Nike. Yeah. No, I'm talking about from that, oh, from that lawsuit. Case. He might. Yeah, he I might. Think, I think he's gonna get paid. But well. I, I thought when he took his stance, and I'll say this, I I don't know. He's he obviously doesn't talk much, and I haven't talked to him. <laughs> I know. I know. Like I don't that. think he meant to start a movement. Right. I think he was just like. For me, I can't agree with what's going on, and I'm just going to sit. I'm not standing for this. And it became – because he didn't publicize. He was right. he yeah. did it for a couple of weeks before right. some a reporter right. asked him right. Right. Yeah. about it. Right, yeah. right. Yep. So I don't think he meant to start anything like this. But when he did it, I remember – I felt like it was actually even more courageous than it looked mm. because he was a second stringer. He was a backup. Yeah. Like, he was expendable. Right. They could have, the 49ers could have cut him right then and there, yeah. and yeah. nobody would have been like, oh, this is crazy. They would have just been like, well, he's not that good anymore. He's right. not starting. Right. He right. would have been gone. So I thought it took more courage because he was expendable versus if he had been a superstar. Okay. If a Russell Wilson, okay. Okay. a Cam Newton, mm. or somebody, a LeBron James in the NBA, if somebody like that did it, yeah. it wouldn't be a, a big issue. They would, I mean, maybe the movement would have taken hold, but they would be in the league. Right. They yeah. would not be out you know, of the I, NFL. You know, and, the way you, no and the way you just worded that, I w- equate that with HIV and Magic Johnson. Mm. Remember? Yep. HIV was out there, but yep. it was like, yeah, it's out there. Right. But the when you had a magic, face yeah. attached right. to it, like a Magic Johnson, right. yeah. whoa. Right. It changed. Stopped. You're right. It, it changed. Right. It no changed question. completely. And, and I mean, so I thought for Capri, I knew he might not play. I knew he put his career in jeopardy. Because it was like he's he's a really good player. He's certainly good enough to be in the NFL. Oh, right. He's better than at least a third of the starting Easy. quarterbacks yeah. out there. But he's not a superstar. Yeah. I don't need like if I'm an NFL team, I don't have to have him. Right. You know, like a Russell Wilson or somebody. So I knew he put his career in jeopardy. And like I said, to me, that took more courage than for a superstar to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but it, it is unfortunate. Look, keeping it real. The players could have him back in the league like that. If the, if the black players and probably even some white players would join in, but if the African-American player said, look, he's better than all these reserves you guys are yeah. signing. The Redskins signed like three oh other quarterbacks yeah. when he was better than all of them. You got all these guys in the league that clearly aren't as good as him. We're not playing next week until Kaepernick's in sign. That's yeah. what and I said. They would not miss a game. Right. Because, because the yeah. league would have been like, he'd be signed pronto. Yeah. You saw it at the yep. University of Missouri. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. right. The right. president was fired immediately. Right. Right. They Shut didn't miss a game. Yep. And those kids really sacrificed. Because yeah. they don't scholarship. They don't yep. have pro contracts. Right. They don't have money. And they did it. So mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen our athletes step mm-hmm. up like that. Uh, but – Unfortunately, they didn't, and it doesn't look like they will. That being yeah, that, said, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm just curious. What do you think the effects will be this coming NFL season? Do you think it's just no more? Even we saw it in the high school ranks, high school players doing it, middle, a cheerleaders even doing it. Right. Where do you think it'll stand next season? I mean, what was it this year? It was like three players. Yeah, it, it kept dwindling. Well, it no, kept but, well, what happened? What happened was the league decided not to show, not to show the right. national. So or because they the didn't. Tunnel. Right. You don't know. You don't right. know whether or not they 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 nailed or not because yeah. it wasn't shown. But they just start well, showing it to the same it became big. Right. They, they, you know, you never, you never, they never televised the national anthem. Right. Until right. this thing kicked right. in. Right. right. And you yep. didn't think and about it. Unless on special games or something right. like that, all-star right. game, Super yeah. Bowl. But I look, I don't think it's going. I was talking to somebody the other day uh, with the players' association, and I asked them how many people, players, are really, you know, thinking about Kaepernick and, and kneeling and getting him in. He said maybe None. 15. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. they've moved on, and yeah. you know. Um, so I, you know, unfortunately, I don't think that uh, anything's gonna happen yeah. next year with it. I think the players, if they were unified, and I know I talked to some NFL players, they did have a chat where they were talking about different things they might do, but they couldn't agree on anything. 
And so, you Your know. Brothers never can. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but you know, if there was more unity, yeah. Kaepernick would probably still be in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I don't think anything's going to. I, I think yeah. it's essentially dead. Before we get you out of here, man, how do you see the uh, NBA, uh, you know, playoffs? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you Golden know, State. Well, <laughs> I can answer be. that real yeah. quick. That do you see, uh, so how do you see LeBron doing? Uh, you know, put is he gonna be able to bring his team to at least second or third seed? Or oh, I'm not second. I don't, I don't, that's a heck of a jump from ninth, with with what thirty something games left in the season. Uh, I think you'll get them in the playoffs, and and if they avoid Golden State in the first round, they'll be all right because they. They can beat, can beat. I'm not saying they would definitely beat Houston or Oklahoma City or whoever, but they can beat any other team in the West. You know, they're capable of it. I mean, if they play Denver, I like LeBron James in that series (laughs) over Nikola Jokic and the rest of those inexperienced players. Uh, So that's what they have to do. They have to make sure they can get a seed where they avoid uh, Golden State in the first round. Real quick, Dallas, Knicks trade, what do you think? I thought it was great for both teams. Yes. Because for Dallas, I love Porzingis matched up with Luka yeah. Doncic. Yeah. And I think for the Knicks, it's all about Capron. Mm. And if they now they have a chance at least to get maybe a Kyrie Irving and right. a Kevin Durant. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of Kyrie, as a man, how did you how did how did you take it when he you know publicly said that he called LeBron and even apologized? Because I thought to a man that takes a whole lot within yourself to come out and admit that you were wrong, you know, right. in, the, in the manner in which you left and, and why you left. No, it, it showed maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't have to – it's interesting that he publicized it unsolicited. That's, that's what made you think there was some right. ulterior motive there. Not a negative thing, but just right. was he trying – He was. I think he was sending a message to his yeah. teammates that, hey, you don't want to listen to me, you don't want to hear it, you think LeBron. you know it all, but <laughs> – well, but I was where you at. I understand right. where you're coming from, yeah. and I didn't listen, and you should listen to me. You know, I think it was that. But I think it showed a lot of maturity on his part, like you said, to call LeBron and apologize. And, you know, I think it was some of it why he left was a misunderstanding because at least part of the reason was that he thought LeBron was involved in trade talks. Mm-hmm. That would have been a three-team deal that would have brought Paul George, Paul George to yeah. Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And Kyrie sent him to, I believe, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he thought LeBron had something to do with it. LeBron and his camp have always denied that. So maybe Kyrie was like, yeah, I, you know, I took it the wrong right, way, right. and you really weren't involved. Gotta ask you because yeah. because he, he he used to he used to uh, work alongside uh, Skip Bayless. But what is uh, well, why, why the hell uh-huh. does Skip Bayless just just do not like LeBron? <laughs> well, Skip would tell you he does like LeBron. He just <laughs> holds him to a high standard. <laughs> he holds him to the Michael Jordan standard. You know, Skip. Skip's nah, thing is that. That's the highest end of Michael Jordan where, I mean, you know, <laughs> well, LeBron James sneezed yeah. wrong. Michael Jordan would have never done right, that. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, Skip <laughs> believes that when LeBron, you know, did this yeah. shock toss in war yeah. number 23, that he was declaring, I'm the next MJ. I say that was his idol. He right. grew up wanting to be like Michael Jordan. That's, it wasn't saying I'm going to be better, I'm going to be as good. It was saying, it was like, you know, when I was a kid, when I was younger, I wanted to wear certain players' numbers, right. you know, because I, right. I looked up to him. Right. So, but that's that's what Skip's about. He he just wants to hold LeBron to this <laughs> oh, incredibly yep. high standard. Well, Chris, I want to thank you yeah. for spending time with us today, and I appreciate it. I know I bugged you enough about it. So <laughs> nah, I it was, yeah, nah, I enjoyed uh, it. It I was a good conversation. Yeah. And, and I must say, please tell uh, please tell my, my young protege, Mark Gunnels, I said hello. Oh, yeah, he's, he's out there. He's out he always there. bugging me, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah so, so, so at least you know where he gets it from. Right, right. He gets it honest. I appreciate